Good afternoon. Welcome to English Worship Service. It's been almost four and a half months that we are in the lockdown, or for some of us, it's still we are in the pandemic. I'm sure most of you uh, have been doing well and are in good spirit, even though most of us are depressed, even most of us are not able to come every Sunday and worship in churches. But I hope and I pray that all of you are keeping well and your families are doing well. Well, before we begin our worship service, uh, today the present worship will be led by Jerian and his friend. And the message, the word of God will be brought to us by Reverend Stafford. And before we move ahead with our service, just like to make a, just like to give a few announcements. Uh, some of you have been calling us and uh, texting us regarding uh, your uh, regarding your offerings and your one tenth, your tithe. Uh, probably you can get in touch with the pastors of our church or any of our committee members that you know. Uh, if uh, if you don't have any of the pastors' number, uh, would like you to either call us or text us in one of our numbers that you'll see here. It'll be popping. It'll just pop up right here. And, or you can just go down to our description box, kindly contact any of our pastors or any of our committee members. Uh, if, uh, if, you have, if you want to give your tithe or if you want to give your offerings for a church. Uh, secondly, some of you have been asking us uh, to come and visit you. If you're in Tura town, if you want us to visit you, please uh, do give us a call. Uh, we would want to, we would love to go and meet you all, but since the situation is such that we cannot go to anybody's place uh, and people may not, uh, uh, it may not be a very convenient for both of us. So if you want any of us, any of the pastors to come and visit you, uh, you can find our numbers in the description box. Kindly call on that number or text us and we will get back to you. So without any further ado, I would request Jerian to come and lead us in the time of worship. We pray and we hope that you will have a wonderful time of worship this afternoon. God bless. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Although we could not come here together as one, but we are privileged enough that we are getting to worship Him through this medium. As we are looking forward to worship Him, shall we look unto God in prayer? Lord, most precious Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this beautiful moment that you have given to us. Lord, it's by your grace only we are here. As we come here before you, Lord, we come just as we are to you. We are not worthy to be here in front of you. We are just sinners in, in front of you, Lord. Lord, we commit ourselves unto you. Forgive our sins. Cleanse us with your precious blood and make us holy. Lord, as we're going to worship you, may you be upon us. May your spirit lead us and guide us throughout the fellowship. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Him today. Some of you might come with a heavy heart and with a heavy burden carrying in your heart. The Word of God says in Matthew chapter 8 verse 11, Come to me, those who are weary and heavy laden, and I will keep you raised. In this very moment, as we come before Him, let us submit to Him. As we sing this song, let us sing this song with a prayer in our heart. So if there is any, anything hindering you today, let us submit to you. Holy, 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 is the 
for him he called us to live a holy life as it is said in first peter chapter 1 verse 15 and 16 but as he which had called you is holy so be you holy in all manner of conversation because it is written be you holy for i am holy so as we sing this song, let us submit to him today and let us sing this song with a prayerful heart, purify my heart. Purify my heart, let me be a scorn and precious silver. Holy 
Good afternoon, friends. Beautiful praise and worship. I just want to thank Brother Jerian and his team from the bottom of my heart. May God continue to use you and bless you for the extension of his kingdom. Let me read the scripture portion for this afternoon's meditation. And I will be sharing from Philippians chapter 4, beginning from verse 6 till verse 9. And I will be reading from New International Version. Let me read it. Philippians chapter 4, beginning from verse 6 to verse 9. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will gird your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, Think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. May God continue to bless each one of us as we continue to seek his face. Shall we look to God in prayer? God, our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this beautiful afternoon. We come to you and to your presence in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we meditate and contemplate on thy word, we pray that, Lord, you will speak to each one of us through your Holy Spirit. Help us to understand, Lord, your word, that we will live for your glory. We want to commit all of us into your loving hand. Be with me as I share your word. We pray this prayer in the loving name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with thanksgiving. Amen. I've already read Philippians chapter 4 beginning from verse 6 to verse 9. Philippians chapter 4 beginning from verse 6 to verse 9. You know Paul has written this beautiful letter to the church in Philippi. And this afternoon we are going to meditate the chapter 4 beginning from verse 6 to verse 9. Our days here on this earth are unpredictable and the effects are far reaching. And because of this coronavirus pandemic, our world is oscillating between fear of livelihood and, the and dread of death. While it's easy to let fear and anxiety permeate our lives, our homes, and our communities, but the peace is possible for those who trust in God. Over 100 diseases 
have been directly attributed to worry. Worry will take away our energy and it will rob us of our stamina as well. Because worry is the ultimate ache of rebellion against the rule of God in the life of a believer. You know, I want to tell you a story about a very well-known Protestant archbishop. He always had a morbid fear of becoming paralyzed. It always remained, remained in his mind. You know, one evening, he was invited to a party. So he went to attend a party. The lady he sat next to him heard muttering mournfully to himself. It's happened at last. Total insensibility of the right limb. You know, he was trying to pinch his leg very hard. But he was not feeling anything, not even the pain. So he was pinching again and again. Then finally, the lady sitting next to him screamed so loud and said, Sir, you are pinching my leg. I can feel the pain. It pained me so much. The archbishop was pinching the lady's leg who was sitting just next to him. You know, worry is sometimes like that. Without a cause or without anything, we just think about anything else and we worry about it. If anybody had an excuse for worrying, it was the Apostle Paul, he was in the prison. His beloved Christian friends in Philippi were disagreeing with one another. And he was not there even to help them. Yudia and Syntyche of women wing cannot get along with each other. It was bringing division into the church. Paul was facing the possibility of his own death. Yes. Paul had a good excuse to worry, but he did not worry. Instead, Paul took time to explain to us the secret of victory over worry. Now you may ask me, what is worry? Let me answer this. The all English root from which we get our word worry means to strangle. It means to pull in different directions. Strangle means, it means to pull in different directions. Our hopes will pull us in one direction and our fears pull us to the opposite direction. That means we are pulled apart. When we are worried, we strangle ourselves. That means we are pulled apart. It was used to refer to the practice of wolves killing sheep by biting them around their neck, thus strangling their prey to death. If you have ever really worried, you know how it does strangle a person. How it does a strangle a person. You know, worry affects our sleep. It affects our thinking. It affects even our digestion. And it also affects our coordination. You know, worry is the greatest thief of joy. It is an inside job, and it takes more than good intentions to get the victory. You know, what is an antidote to worry? You know, what is an antidote to worry? The antidote to worry is the secured mind. Look at Philippians chapter 4. 4 verse 7 and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus when you have a secured mind the peace of God God girds you and the God of peace guides you the peace of God girds you and the God of peace guides you you know to conquer worry 
and to have a secured mind, we must meet the conditions that God has laid down in Philippians chapter 4, beginning from verse 6 to verse 9. This afternoon, I'm going to share three things, specially as we ponder upon God's word. Number one, you know, if you want to have a peace of mind, if you want to conquer worry, you know, right kind of praying. Verse 6 and verse 7. If you want to conquer worry, and if you want to enjoy the peace of God in your life. Number two, right kind of thinking. It was written in verse 8. Finally, if you want to conquer worry, and if you want to have peace and good relationship in your life, right kind of living in verse 9. Let us come to number one. Right praying. Just look at verse 6 and verse 7. Look at verse 6 and verse 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition and with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You know, Paul did not write, pray about it. Paul did not write, pray about it. Instead, Paul uses three different words to describe it. Instead, Paul uses in chapter 6, chapter 5, chapter 4, verse 6, he uses three different kind of words. Number one, prayer. Number two, supplication. And number three, thanksgiving. Right kind of praying involves all these three. If you want to have a right kind of prayer, prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving will be involved. Now as we come to number one, prayer. Prayer is a general word for making requests known to God. You know, prayer carries the idea of adoration. It carries idea of devotion. And it also carries the idea of worship. Whenever we find ourselves worrying, we first, our first action ought to get alone with God and worship Him. We must see the greatness and the majesty of our God. God is big enough to solve our problem. We must approach His throne with calmly and in deepest reverence for Him. The first step is to pray in adoration. If we turn to Acts chapter 16, you know, Paul and his friends, Acts chapter 16, let me read it. Chapter 16, beginning from chapter 16, verse 25 to 27. Let me read it. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundation of the prison were shaken. At once all the prisoner, prison doors flew open, and everybody's chain came loose. And the jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword, and he was about to kill himself, because he thought the prisoners had escaped. Look at Acts chapter 16. You know, Paul and Silas, they've been thrown into the prison. They've suffered so much physically. They've been beaten. Their clothes were stripped off. You know, bleeding in their body. Bruised completely at the back. 
they suffered so much but even in the midst of pain and suffering at midnight they started praising God realize that God is great God is awesome you know that kind of they started worshiping God adoring God you know something has, has happened you know when we have a problem in our lives you know instead of focusing on our problem we have to focus on God you know when we adore God you know God will always honor us number two it talks about supplication and earnest sharing of our needs and problems God wants us to be earnest in our asking or supplication you know as we come to Matthew chapter 7 verse 1 to verse 11 you know God wants us to be earnest in our asking for help from God look at the prayer of our Lord Jesus Christ at the garden of Gethsemane look at Luke chapter 22 verse 42 to verse 44 and being in anguish he prayed more earnestly and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground you know supplication is praying with great spiritual intensity with great spiritual intensity you know when we pray when we come to God with a supplication with great spiritual intensity God is going to answer our prayer look at Colossians chapter 4 verse 12 let me read it Colossians chapter 4 verse 12 let me read it Epapras who is one of you and a servant of Christ Jesus sends greetings he is always wrestling in prayer for you. You know, Paul mentioned about this man. He is praying for you. He is wrestling in praying for you. You know, when we wrestle, you know, we sweat. You know, so much of energy we spend. You know, this man, when he prayed for the people, you know, he spends so much of energy, his strength. You know, when we pray this kind of prayer, you know, God answers our prayer. Then comes the third one, appreciation. You know, giving thanks to God in all circumstances. Look at Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. Let me read it. Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. 15 and 16 and 17 let me read it let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts since as members of one body you were called to peace and be thankful let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom and as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through Jesus Christ our Lord. You know, we have to appreciate God. We must come before His throne with a grateful heart with a thankful heart in Luke chapter 17 verse 11 to verse 19 you know Jesus healed 10 lepers but only one returned to give thanks to Jesus Christ you know we are eager to ask but when God answered our prayer we are slow to appreciate you know Paul Counsel us to take everything to God in prayer. We are not to worry about anything, but to pray about everything. And what is the result? The peace of God girds the heart and mind in Christ Jesus. The peace of God guards the mind. 
hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. You know, we all long for this kind of experience in our life. You know, Paul was in chain to a Roman soldier, guarded day and night. But the peace of God stands guard over his life. Look at the life and testimony of Daniel. Daniel chapter 6, verse 1 to verse 10. I don't have much time to read, so I will not be reading. When the king announced that none of his subjects was to pray to anyone except the king, Daniel, he went to his room. He opened his window facing to Jerusalem. And he prayed as before. He prayed and gave thanks before his God in verse 10. And what was the result? He had perfect peace, even in the midst of difficulty. Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, and he was able to spend the night with lions peacefully. But the king, just think about king. He was in a royal palace, but king could not sleep even in his palace throughout the night. In verse 18, you know, God's peace will rule in our lives, even in the midst of pain, even in the midst of difficult circumstances. When we have this kind of peace, you know, worry will diminish. Worry will go away from us. Friends, when we think about our life, especially these days, you know, sometimes when our days are very uncertain, we don't know what will happen to each one of us. You know, sometimes unnecessary worry just creep into our minds. And we have this kind of difficulties in our life. And we don't know about the situation. And we struggle. And when we have this kind of situation in our lives, what we are to do? We are to come to our sovereign God in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. When the peace of God rule in our hearts, worry will go away from us. You know, secondly, as we come to chapter 4, verse 8, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, let me read it. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, and whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, Whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. You know, peace involves the heart and the mind. Look at Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. In Isaiah chapter 26, Verse 3 says, You will keep him in perfect peace, those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. You will keep him in perfect peace, those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. You know, wrong thinking leads to wrong feeling. And before long, the heart and mind pull apart and we are strangled by worry. You know, wrong thinking leads to wrong feeling. And before long, the heart and mind pull apart and we are strangled to worry. You know, it happens to us when our minds are not right with God. When our minds are filled with wrong thinking, you know, it will lead us to wrong feeling. Thoughts are real and they are powerful 
and though it cannot be seen, weighed, or measured. The Bible tells us to bring it into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Jesus Christ. You know, we have to bring into the captivity of our Lord Jesus Christ to the obedience. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10. You know, somebody said this. This is a beautiful saying. Let me quote it. So a thought, reap an action. So an action, reap a habit. So a habit, reap a character. So a character, and reap a destiny. So a thought, and reap an action. You know, when we sow an action, we reap a habit. When we sow a habit, it becomes our character. So our character reap a destiny. You know, Satan is a liar. The disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ, John, the beloved, he wrote in John chapter 8, verse 44. Let me read. John chapter 8, Verse 44. Now let me read it. John chapter four, 8, verse 44. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of all lies. You know, he is a liar and the father of all lies. You know, he wants to corrupt our minds with his lies. You know, that is his agenda. That is how he works in our minds. You know, he wants to cut up our minds. He wants to spoil it by his lies. In 2 Corinthians 11, 3. You know, he asked if in the Garden of Eden, has God said in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 to 6. And as we turn to Genesis chapter 3, you know, the devil said to Eve, his God said, the Holy Spirit of God controls our minds through truth. The Holy Spirit of God controls our mind through truth. John chapter 17, verse 17. But the devil tries to control through lies. You know, God wants to control our mind through truth. But the devil, he wants to control our mind through lies. You know, the Christian who fills his heart and mind with God's word will have a built-in radar. Will have a built-in radar for detecting wrong thoughts. The psalmist says in Psalms 119 verse 165 great peace those who love your law and nothing can make them stumble psalm 119 verse 11 says i have hidden your word in my heart that i might not sin against you you know right thinking is the result of daily meditation on the word of god that's why we have to meditate, we have to study, we have to read God's word daily. Psalms number one, verse two. But whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and whose, who meditates on his law day and night. You know, that's why we are to read the scripture every day. 
we are to meditate on the word of God every day so that our minds will be filled with the word of God that I have hidden your word in my heart that I may not sin against you great peace of those who love your law and nothing can make them stumble you know when we spend our time with the word of God our life will be different our thinking will be different our life will be transformed we will be transformed into the likeness of our Lord Jesus Christ may you be found always reading and meditating the word of the Lord every day this is my prayer for you finally to the last point we are coming right living in verse 9 Philippians chapter 4 verse 9 let me read it whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you and the God of peace will be with you friends we cannot separate outward action and inward attitude sin always results in unrest when we commit or submit ourselves to sin result is always unrest there will be no peace of mind we will struggle and the purity out to result in peace but when we have a holy thought when our mind is in pure state the result will be filled in peace in Isaiah chapter 32 verse 17 says the fruit of that righteous will be peace its effect will be quietness and confidence forever the fruit of that righteousness will be peace its effect will be quietness quietness and confidence you know right living is a necessary condition for experiencing the peace of God you know right living is a necessary condition for experiencing the peace of God as we look at Philippians chapter 4 verse 9 Paul talks about four activities learn receive, heard and sin learn receive, heard and sin it is one thing to learn a truth and quite another thing to receive it inwardly and make it a part of our inner man. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13. You know when Paul expounded the word of God, you know these people, the Thessalonian church, they received the word of God and they allow the word of God to become a part of their life inwardly. You know, in Paul's ministry, he not only taught the word of God, but also lived it so that his listeners could see the truth in his life. You know, in Paul's ministry, he not only taught the word of God, but he also lived it so that his listeners could see the truth in his life. We are asked to be the doers of the word of God, and not only the listeners you know as we turn to James chapter 1 verse 22 the peace of God will act like the empire in our life in Colossians chapter 3 verse 15 15 if we are walking with the Lord then the peace of God and the God of peace exercise their influence over our hearts Whenever we disobey God, we lose that peace and we know that we have done something wrong in our lives. There is no middle ground. Either we yield heart and mind to the Spirit of God and practice right praying, right thinking and right living, or we yield to the flesh and find ourselves torn apart by 
worry. There is no need to worry. First Peter chapter 5 verse 7 says, Cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. He cares for the lilies of the valley. He cares for, for the birds in the air. You know, God cares for each one of us. Let us cast all our worries, all our anxieties. Let us bring them into the feet of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before I conclude, I want to say this beautiful story and I want to end my sharing. Many years ago, in the pioneer days of aviation, a pilot was making a flight around the world. After he had gone for two hours from his last landing field, he heard a noise in his plane some thousand feet up in the air and he recognized as a knowing of a red. He realized that while his plane had been on the ground, a red had gotten in. The red could be knowing through a vital cable or the control of the plane. It was a very serious situation. The pilot was both concerned and also anxious. At first, he did not know what to do. Then he remembered a red is a rodent, a kind of knowing mammal. Reds are not for mid the heights, but to live on the ground and underground. The pilot began to climb higher and higher and higher, and we, he went up to 40,000 feet high in the air. The knowing ceased and the red was dead. The pilot brought down the flight to the ground safely. You know, worry is like red in your life, hurt and mind. It will destroy your life and steal away all your joy. Worry cannot live in the secret place of the Most High God. It cannot breathe in the atmosphere that is steep in prayer and influenced by the Word of God. Worry dies when we ascend to the Lord through prayer and by the Word of God. Dear friends, you know, when we look at our lives, when we look at the circumstances, when the situation seems to be so bad, what do you do? Do you worry or do you seek God's peace? This afternoon, as God speaks to each one of us, let us bring all our worries and all our anxieties into the feet of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will take it and He will sustain us and he will give us the peace that will pass all understanding. Shall we look to God in prayer? God, our loving Heavenly Father, thank you once again for speaking to each one of us when the situation and the circumstances seems to be uncontrollable, but we know that there is peace in you. And we want to have that kind of peace in our life. When the situation is so bad, when we cannot control the circumstances, when things that move around us, we cannot control it. But you know our hearts more than we do. And we bring all our prayers and our petition before your throne of grace. Once again, we seek you once again, we bring ourselves into your throne of grace. We offer ourselves, Lord, as a living sacrifice. Give us your peace and help us to understand and to know your joy and to live a life that is always a blessing. We pray this prayer in the loving name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
for thanksgiving. Amen.